the Suns are building something of genuine substance. He's done a fantastic job, Stuart Jew, with this group. And maybe a contract extension coming his way. An absolute honour. Very humbled, but you know, excited and confident for what's ahead of us. I see enough here that um, we've got the foundation of, of people and the capability that, you know, if we stay the course, you know, we're going to give ourselves every opportunity. Welcome back to Footy Classified. Uh, today, a red letter day for the Gold Coast Football Club. In my opinion, it was the day that it actually became a genuine football club by making a decision that had been analysed for over 12 months, one that was made inside the soft cap, and at the same time, it was made by substance. The word substance we heard there many times in the calls of their games this year rather than on opinion or whether or not the AFL liked what was going on or the media. The man who has been driving all of that is the president of the Gold Coast Suns, Tony Cochran who joins us from the Gold Coast tonight. Uh, Tony, congratulations. Uh, I really sincerely mean what I just said there. I thought it was a fantastic day for your football club. Congratulations. Thanks Ed and hi folks from Melbourne. Yeah, look, uh it was a really proud day for the club and um, I guess it's it's kind of an outward show of um, a few things. Firstly, how professional the club has become. I think how solid the club has become and uh, what a terrific culture we've built over the last four years, uh, which is no small part as Stuart Jew and, and a lot of people, a lot of people uh, alongside Stuart Jew uh, in his assistant coaches and you know people like Royce, uh, sorry Royce Shaw, who's come to us, Reece Shaw, who's come to us, uh, who's doing such a great job with uh, development of our younger players. It, it's you know it's Mark yeah. Evans. There's so many parts to a good decision. A good decision isn't just one guy and one thing. There's so many parts to it, and uh, it was a really really strong day for the club, and I'm super happy for everybody. Tony, I heard Stuart, thanks for joining us, I heard Stuart say in his press conference that you and Mark went to him at the end of last season and said, what can we do, what can we help you with, what can we give you to give you the best chance to keep your job? Can you specify what Stuart asked you to do for him? Yeah, look, uh, I, I, we took a whole-of-club approach towards the end of last year because we could see... You didn't have to be Einstein to work out. He was under the pump, uh, particularly in the media. And we wanted to uh, let him know that from our point of view, it, it was really important that we were after progression. We weren't interested in analysing wins, losses, or you know how many fans bought memberships or how many tickets we sold or, you know, anything else we were purely after the progression of the group and we wanted to know that he had all of our support and i'm talking about the whole board every single board member wanted him to know that we were absolutely alongside him and we were going to be alongside him and our decision was going to be made made on the progression of the group nothing else we weren't interested in any outside noise we weren't interested in results. We we're interested in seeing real, genuine progression of the entire playing group. Tony, now you've made your decision. Uh, is there truth to it that the AFL can, can, uh, could put pressure on you as a football club to say, Alistair Clarkson's out there. We believe he could be a better fit for this job at the Gold Coast Suns and try and put pressure on you guys uh, to override the decision like making that one to, to go with Stuart Duke? Uh, no. Uh, those people that know me really well, uh, good luck <laughs> trying to tell me what I've got to do. Um, but the the truth of the matter is, I have nothing but great respect for Gil McLaughlin, everybody in the AFL and everybody in the AFL Commission. Uh, that's not to say I don't occasionally have a blue with them, but Gil has been tremendously supportive of what we're doing. And to be honest, if, if Gil thought, you know, the decision to get better results was to make Tony Cochran the coach, Gil would have said, hey, Coco, why don't you have a go at coaching? Because what Gil wants is to see the Gold Coast Sun successful as a franchise because we're building such a strong business case for the AFL here in Queensland. So a part of that is clearly the Lions' success, but it's also clearly the Gold Coast Sun's success. So 
Gill is only interested in us achieving success. Gill has never pushed on any of us anything, whether it's another coach, whether it's a head of uh, fitness, whether it's, uh, you know, you need to build more grandstand seats. Gill is, um, uh, and that's why it's going to be hard to replace, by the way, Gill is so strong on his support for building the business of AFL, not only in Queensland, but in New South Wales. So, Tony, I'll just take you back to the first point. We spoke about progression. There was no metrics. Ultimately, there has to be. It can't be just, oh, we've progressed. So, I mean, your percentage last year was 73%. You're 109 now. So you're, you're in front there. Your, your wins are seven, and we know your, your performances against top four teams, like calling it on the weekend in Melbourne, have been strong. So the metrics are there. They really are based around increased competitiveness on the field that can be measured. Do you think that's fair to say? And then, but specifically, what growth have you seen in Stuart Dew? A young coach, few assistant coaches left with a bit of angst, made some noise, but from the outside, he's carried himself so well. Have you seen him grow as he's handled that? And then that's reflected in the team's performance also. Yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, we, we often, as an industry, we talk about young players and if we can get them to 50 games they're going to be that much better and then we get them to 80 to 100 games they're going to be really useful footballers and then when you get them past 100 games they can do all sorts of things for you as a club guess what here's my observation over a lot of years so it's true with coaches you know and Stuart Jew is a coach who's now into his roughly his 80th game or something you know they're no different coaches might come to you with lots of knowledge but ultimately coaches learn really the hard stuff when you're the senior coach you know only too well you learn it on the road <laughs> you don't get you can have a thousand lessons before you get in there but when you're the ultimate head guy you're calling the final shot on a decision it's you and um, i have been blown away and I, and I speak on behalf of lots of others, Mark Evans, our board, uh, several others, uh, Wayne Campbell, who's been a terrific add to our club. Uh, we've, we've all been blown away with how Stuart has really grown as an individual and a personality and a level of confidence in the past 12 months. And, and that's great credit to him. I mean, tremendous credit to him. I, 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 I really, really love the guy. I think he's brought so much to our young footy club Tony, and I'm, um, I'm super proud he's going to be the young, uh, longest serving club in the club's history Long, longest serving coach in the club's history Tony you take on the Tigers this weekend I, I imagine Brendan Gale will be um, a guest at your game will you address with him the fact that you didn't think he was suitable as an ex-CEO of the AFL and in fact spoke to a few other non-Victorian presidents about him uh, firstly, Brendan Gale, like every other CEO in the AFL system, every president in the system, is very welcome. We, we go out of our way to host uh, a very, very strong and a very uh, good function for uh, visiting teams, as everybody will attest in the AFL. I'm sure we, you'll we, be a good host. We regard we that, the fact that you didn't we think it was that suitable as of being the next part. CEO of the AFL. Yeah, you've, you've asked me a question. If you give me a chance, I might even have a shot at answering it. Um, we regard that as a really important part of the job we have to do. Uh, Brendan Gale will be made to feel most welcome. As to private conversations I might have or might not have had with other AFL presidents, the one great thing about my eight years, they've remained, as Ed can tell you, sitting at your very desk, because he used to be a president alongside me, they remain absolutely private. Hey, uh, Tony, uh, speaking of Tassie, though, um, you've had a bit to say about it. I agree with the points that you've made. I think that we have to really look at this not just from the heart but also from the head. Uh, have you had further thoughts on where this is going as far as, you know, from what I'm gathering, the AFL will grant a licence to Tasmania. What it looks like when they eventually come in, we're not quite sure. But is there, is there, are you any closer to what you'd really like to see with this Tasmanian licence coming in? Love you, Ed. I think everybody's so overhearing what Tony Cochran thinks of Tasmania. It's unfortunate that more people aren't in, uh, joining into the debate. But here's the truth. The AFL Commission and Gill has asked us all to be patient to August. They're going to put a paper in front of us that is going to outline 
how strong their case is or is not, as the case may be, no one's seen it yet, so no one can tell, uh, is going to be for a Tasmanian licence. Uh, I will take that to my board. Uh, my board will sit and debate it, and then we will go back with a viewpoint uh, that's a board viewpoint from the Gold Coast Football Club. But uh, again, with a bit of fresh air, let me reiterate, I am not opposed to a team in Tasmania, not for a heartbeat. I have real concerns, and a lot of other people in our industry with a lot more smarts than I've got have real concerns that can we afford a 19th franchise? That's not can we afford to be in Tasmania, it's can we afford a 19th franchise and all of the complications that comes with a 19th franchise. That is the debate that I've tried to centre on. Yep. That is the debate that I'm interested in. And um, I've just tried to be uh, a spokesperson for that, representing the view of the club that I represent. I'm not there to represent the AFL. I'm not there to represent uh, the greater good of Tasmania. I'm not there to represent the greater good of Western Sydney. I represent the view point of why we, as the Gold Coast Suns, might be concerned about a 19th franchise. Yep, well articulated there, Tony. Uh, ten seconds. Uh, big crowd against the Pies. There seems to be a groundswell of support up there. Uh, the place was rocking last week. Everybody loved it. It was wet conditions. But what a game of footy. You've got ten seconds, mate. Can you say that in ten seconds? <laughs> well, I'm not... You know, it's all right for you to say what a game of footy. Um, if it, we had a one by five points, I would have agreed with you. But, you know, it's a real... How unfortunate. We've had two very, very, the narrowest of losses, two points and five points um, against very solid, very good sides. Uh, we clearly wanted two wins. But, yeah, look, it was a tremendous. Uh, we were totally sold out corporately. We are again this week against Richmond. A lot of ticket sales. Um, there's no question uh, we're growing and becoming a much stronger franchise on the Gold Coast. And, and I appreciate and thank all our membership and all our fans for that. Good on you, Tony. Congratulations. As I said, a, a great day in the history of the Gold Coast Football Club. Well done for you for your uh, contribution over the last 12 months. You've been pretty straight as far as what you're doing at the coaching position. And we appreciate, as always, mate, that you made time for us tonight on Footy Classified. Good luck against the Tigers. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Look, take care, everyone. Good on you, mate. Tony Cochran, the chairman of the Gold Coast Suns.